The American bittern has a flair for not being seen. Standing rigidly immobile in a marsh, he points his bill skyward. His striped neck, that seems itself assembled from reeds, flows upward to his tapering head and beak. You can look straight at a bittern and not see it. And then you do. Reeds can morph into a bird and back again. Don't take your eyes off him for a second or you could lose it. And the bittern's DNA sometimes urges him to sway. It's part of his camouflage. Reeds blow in the breeze and he moves as if he were part of them. The charade is less effective when there aren't any actual, like, reeds there, but he doesn't seem to notice that. If he were in the reeds, though, his green legs would match the low grasses. One way to find a bittern who has buried himself, in springtime anyway, is to listen for his distinctive call. Playing it on your phone will sometimes bring a response. It's been variously described as the gulps of a thirsty giant, a plunger, a frog in a well, and a bassoon with a limp. When people are near, he mostly stays put till either they go away or he gets tired of posing. If he moves, it will be at near glacial speed. You'll see it, but he might go further back in the grass and you lose him. Sometimes, though, he comes out in the open stalking his food. Predator that he is, he weaves his neck back and forth like a cobra. Watching herons move is a joy. They always make me think that somebody put our knees on backwards. Bird knees really work. I mean, look how efficiently he uses his lower legs. When we walk on our knees, we lumber like injured sloths. This bittern glides like water over pebbles. And when the plumage on his head spikes into a punk hairdo, He's excited to be on the hunt. The bittern allows himself that tiny show of excitement, but otherwise, he's pure stealth.